everybody, Chef Scott here for Devil's Food Kitchen. Today we are making pastry cream. Links to the equipment that we're gonna to use today you can find in the description below. Um, pastry cream is known by a lot of different names. You may have heard it referred to as creme pâtissier, which is what they call it in France. They've got a different word for everything over there. In England, you may have heard it called creme pat, especially if you've watched the great British baking show, which you should because it's awesome. And here we call it pastry cream. Although you may have heard it referred to as custard or even pudding, I think that's an applicable assessment. It's pretty close to those things. So whatever you call it, pastry cream is a really fundamental recipe. It's something that you should know if you are a serious baker. In fact, it's so important that as a chef instructor, it was one of the first recipes I would teach my students. So we're gonna get started here in a minute. If you're just interested in the method, you can skip ahead now, but I wanna talk about the food science behind pastry cream and a few notes for getting the recipe just right. When we're talking about the food science of pastry cream, we're really talking about the food science of eggs. And for any food science geeks out there, eggs are super cool. They do so much in a recipe. They're so versatile. Uh, I love talking about them. And the first thing we need to talk about is egg protein. Protein and eggs in their natural state are like tightly bound coils, kind of like a slinky. And as you work with them, either by whisking or by applying heat, those coils begin to unravel and stretch out. That's known as a denatured protein, just because it's been removed from its natural state, tightly bound. Those denatured proteins stretch and start to intertwine with one another. And over time, they create a solid mesh. That's coagulation. That's what gets you a scrambled egg or a quiche or a creme brulee or a pastry cream. So we got to make sure that we're coagulating these eggs properly. Now, the speed at which you coagulate is going to determine what type of texture you get in the end. If you apply the heat too rapidly, then the proteins are going to bind when they're still in that tightly coiled state. If you've ever made scrambled eggs and just got the pan screaming hot and dropped an egg in there, all of a sudden it gets super tight. And that's because we haven't given enough time for that protein to unravel. So the first key of great pastry cream is not applying too much heat too fast. We wanna make sure that we give the egg proteins time to denature, to unravel, so that we get a nice smooth network of protein binding and not a bunch of tight coils. The second big concept in good pastry cream is evaporation because protein's not the only thing in our recipe. We have a lot of water in there as well. When the proteins do bind together, they start to surround or encapsulate water molecules. And it's the combination of these bound proteins and water that gives you a nice silky texture. If we leave too much water in the recipe, so not enough evaporation, then we're gonna have a very thin and runny pastry cream. And we don't want that. It's gonna be difficult to work with and not very good for us. On the other hand, if we take too much water out, we evaporate too much, then a lot of those water molecules that are trapped by protein are gonna go. They're gonna leave and they're just gonna leave behind protein which is then going to bind tighter and tighter and tighter together and we get a rubbery texture or almost brittle. So the key to great pastry cream is in proper coagulation and just the right amount of evaporation. And that might sound complicated, but it's not. It really just comes down to the right amount of heat and the right amount of time. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna measure out some ingredients and then get started. We've got everything measured out. We are ready to start our recipe. Again, all of the equipment that you need is in the description below. But before you get started, set up a sheet pan. I've just got a half sheet pan here with plastic wrap. Um, we're gonna use this when the pastry cream is done. We need to spread this out. So I already have my milk and my vanilla in the sauce pot ready to go. And I get a lot of questions about vanilla paste, which is what I call for in this recipe. Uh, here I'm using Nielsen Massey's vanilla paste. And instead of just extract, this has some of the pulp and seed of the actual bean in it, which I really love because you get the visual effect of the beans in the finished product, which is an important step. And the flavor and consistency of it is great without the extreme cost of a whole vanilla bean. So I highly recommend using that. So I've got my egg yolks, my sugar, and my cornstarch as well. Some recipes will call for pastry cream powder, including a few of my recipes. 
Uh, pastry cream powder is really just cornstarch. It does have vanillin added to it, which is a coloring and a flavoring agent, but regular old cornstarch is going to work just fine. So I'm going to take just a small amount of my sugar and put that into my milk. And that is going to help keep some of the milk solids from burning as we're heating this up. And then I'm going to start my heat uh, on about a medium low heat. I'm just going to start to bring this up to a simmer. And while that's heating up, I'm going to combine my egg yolks, my sugar, and my cornstarch. Now, as soon as I add my sugar and my cornstarch to my egg yolks, I want to whisk it up immediately. I don't want to let that sit. If I let the sugar sit on the yolks, the sugar is going to pull moisture from the yolks and burn them, which is basically leaving protein behind in the yolks. You can't undo that. So as soon as sugar and cornstarch goes in, we're going to whisk. So I've got that, my cornstarch, and then we'll whisk. Start slowly at first, moving from the center and drawing that dry ingredient out. You may think there's no way this is all going to incorporate it, but it will. Really whisk all of that together. Make sure you get all of the sugar incorporated. It's going to be fairly thick and that's just fine. Now we don't want to add the sugar and the cornstarch too soon. I wouldn't do this in the morning if I plan to make pastry cream in the afternoon. But once you start your milk, that's totally fine. So we're gonna wait for this to come up to a simmer. I can turn the heat up now. And then we're ready for the next step. And now it's time to temper. So I'm gonna pour a small amount of this hot liquid into my egg mixture and whisk that in and then do it a couple more times. And the idea is to slowly warm up the eggs so we don't shock them and cook them too quickly. I think two additions is just fine. And now we're gonna pour this egg mixture back into our sauce pot while whisking. And once these eggs go back in, we're not gonna stop whisking. So now we're just whisking the mixture consistently until it begins to thicken. Make sure to work into the sides of the sauce pot because that's where people usually forget and that's where scrambled eggs can form. Once I start to see this foam start on the surface, I know I'm about to thicken up and you can see this thickening now. So I'm gonna remove this from the heat very briefly and just give a good whisk. There's still a lot of heat left in this sauce pot as it's gonna to continue to thicken these eggs. Now, if I took this off the stove right now and I was done, I'd have too much water remaining. I'd also have some cornstarch flavor left in. So we need to cook that out and get rid of just a bit more water. So I'm gonna bring this back on the stove and continuing to cook on medium heat. I'm just going to wait for that pastry cream to bubble once or twice. And we can see that happening there. I know it's cooking out and we're good. So I'm gonna remove it from the heat for good now. And here's a really important trick. I'm going to continue to whisk this off the heat for about 30 seconds to a minute. There's a lot of heat retained in the sauce pot and in the mixture itself. And if I just let it sit by itself, it would overcook and begin to scramble. Keep in mind too, that the pastry cream is going to thicken as it cools. It may seem a little thin right now, but after some time in the refrigerator, it'll thicken up and be the right consistency. So with that, I am ready to pour this out on the sheet pan that we got ready. And don't worry, the plastic will be just fine with the heat. And if you do this correctly, you'll see there are no scrambled eggs in that pan, right? So now I'm going to spread this out. And then I'm going to cover the pastry cream with the excess plastic wrap. You could always add a second piece of plastic wrap if you needed to and press that down some more. So this is gonna create a lot of surface area, which means the pastry cream will cool rapidly. And that is what we want. We do not want to keep this hot for very long. And that's for a few reasons. One, we don't want these eggs to cook any further, but two, we don't want to let the pastry cream sit in a dangerous zone for bacterial growth. 
So we're gonna throw this in the refrigerator to start to chill. Alternately, you could put this in the freezer for just a few minutes, but you don't wanna leave it in there. Pastry cream can't be frozen. If you do freeze it, the water in the pastry cream will turn into ice shards that will tear apart the protein network, and when you defrost it, it'll be like watery, disgusting pastry cream soup. Not good. So this is going into the refrigerator, we're gonna let it cool. Pastry cream might be a basic recipe, but it still frustrates and intimidates plenty of cooks out there. I've certainly been there. So remember these tips next time you're making pastry cream and you'll conquer it in no time. Number one, temper your eggs. Once your milk has boiled, add it in a few small additions to your eggs to bring them up to temperature so that you don't shock them when you put everything back on the stove. Number two, whisk continuously. Once the eggs are added, you want to whisk until everything's done. Otherwise, you might end up with scrambled eggs. Number three, keep the heat low. Especially if you're new to this recipe, a lower heat will be easier to manage and you're less likely to overcook your pastry cream. Number four, once your pastry cream is done cooking and you've removed it from the stove, continue to whisk for one or two minutes. That's going to help bring some of that heat off and reduce the risk of overcooking the pastry cream once it's done. Number five, chill the pastry cream rapidly, but don't freeze it. If the pastry cream freezes, you'll never get the right texture and it will end up watery once it defrosts. I hope you liked the video, everybody, and that you give the recipe a try, especially any of you out there who have tried pastry cream in the past and had issues. Hopefully some of my tips will make you the pastry cream champion you were born to be. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, all those things help, and turn on notifications so you never miss another video. Until next time, I am Chef Scott for Devil's Food Kitchen.